Hello, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com. Welcome back to our DNN Task Manager module development series. This is the second video in the series, the part two of how to configure your DNN development environment. Now in the previous video, we went through and we created our website in IIS, and within that website we extracted the contents of the DNN install package so that we can install DNN version 7.1.2. In this video, the second part, we're going to go ahead and create the database that our DNN development environment will utilize. We'll also then define how our website is going to be able to connect to that database. We're going to set up the permissions and the security. And then we're going to go through the installation process itself within DNN. So let's go ahead and switch over to SQL Server Management Studio. I'm using SQL Server 2012. And from here, what we want to do is we want to create a database within our SQL Server. So I'm going to right click on the databases node and I'm going to choose new database. Now for the database name, I'm going to give it a name of dnndev.me to match the website and the folder name that we're utilizing within our development environment. Now you can configure other settings within your database if you like. We're simply just going to give it a name and then click OK. So that creates a new database within our local SQL Server. From here, we need to define the permissions for our website to be able to access that local database. To do that within SQL Server, we're going to go to the Security node and then into the Logins node. From there, we're going to right-click and choose New Login. Now you can create a new SQL Server authenticated user if you like, or you can use Windows authentication. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to use the application pool account that was created when we created our website within IIS. And this is also the same account we gave read write permissions to the folder structure for our website. Now we because we named our website dnndev.me. IIS, our web server, created an application pool called dnndev.me. So we're going to choose IIS space app pool backslash dnndev.me. From here, we need to go ahead and choose which databases that user is going to have access to. So we're going to click on the user mapping page on the left. We're going to check the box next to dnndev.me. We're going to check the box down below for DB owner and then we'll click OK. What we've done here is we've now given that IIS application pool user the ability to access this newly created dnndev.me database. Now from here the next step is to go through the installation process for our DNN website. So I'm going to do that by navigating to a browser and within that browser I'm going to navigate to dnndev.me now the first time you hit your local DNN website, it's going to take a moment while that website is compiled. All of the code for DNN gets compiled and loaded up by the web server. Once that process completes, what we should see is the installation wizard for our DNN environment. Now from the installation wizard screen, we can go ahead and enter the information necessary for our install. We'll go ahead and define a password for our host account or our super user account. And we can give our website a name. You can always change that name in the future if you like. Now, typically what I would do when I'm installing DNN for development environment is I would use the blank template of DNN. So I'll choose that option. And then I can go ahead and choose my language. From there, we can go ahead and perform our database setup. Now I'm going to use a custom database connection because I'm not using SQL Server Express. I'm using a full version of SQL Server. So we want to go ahead and put in the instance name of our SQL Server. Now if you're using a local instance with, with the default naming, you can use a single period for the server name. For the name of our database, we're going to do dnndev.me. Now in a development environment, you probably want to use an object qualifier. That's a setting here during the installation process. The object qualifier will be placed in front of all of the database objects. So a table in DNN might be called users. 
If you use an object qualifier, that will become DNN underscore users. This allows you to install DNN into an existing database without overwriting any existing tables. Though it's not a very common scenario that you would use this setting in production, it is possible. And as a module developer, you want to try to support as many different combinations of settings as possible. So we use an object qualifier in our development environment. From there, we can choose our security if it's integrated or user defined. Because we're using the app pool for security within Windows, uh, within the database, we can use the integrated option. Then we also have a run as database owner option. From here, we'll go ahead and click on continue. DNN does a quick check to make sure it can access that database server, and then it will go through and perform the installation process. Now I'll pause the video recording as we wait for that process to complete. Now once the process is complete, we have the option here to visit the website. So we'll go ahead and click on that option. And that will take us to our newly created DNN development environment. Now the URL for that development environment, once again, is dnndev.me. And we can access that through our browser. Now the first time you hit a DNN install, after it's been installed, you're going to see the welcome screen here. We can go ahead and close that option. And now we have our blank .NET Nuke or DNN website utilizing one of the default skins within DNN. You notice we don't have any additional pages. We just have a single page with no content on it. A great place to start as a module developer, a blank DNN website. So in the next videos in our task manager series, you'll see how we can go through and start to create that task manager module.